The Consciously Curious Show is the place to inspire or satisfy your curiosity. Welcome back to The Consciously Curious Show. I'm Peggy Sue Skipper, and I am still talking and love talking to Helen Wright. Welcome back. Welcome. So, um, we were just talking in the break about how we could probably go on forever. <laughs> but I think it's important to to share with people experiences that really uh, affected you so that it may help somebody else. And I know that you lived in chronic pain for mm -hmm. many, many years. So tell us a little bit about that and your healing or wellness process attached to that. So 15 years of chronic pain, and I'm talking well over $100,000 to doctors in the Houston area, great doctors. Uh, pain and Stress Center, um, the Institute of Pain and Stress, actually introduced me to biofeedback, self-meditation, self-hypnosis. So that was the, the first opening of a door into alternative healing. Um, not quite at the level we play at today, but it was a beginning. But it was the first step. It was. And the, the conflict, though, was that all the doctors I went to with herniated discs and soft tissue damage told me it was a life sentence. It would get worse with age. They did tell me, you know, don't gain weight. I did a lot of physical therapy. I've had injections, uh, steroids injected right into muscle spasms. Mm. It, was, it was not the most fun way to live. Um, my whole world revolved around pain, how I dressed, what I ate, when I rested, how I slept, what it, you know, the heating pad. It was always, we, we had to monitor this big monster in our life to even, for, even for me to function. And then in my studies, uh, being exposed to meditation and wanting to get to a better level of it to feel better, I had heard that if you meditate at the same time in the same place, that's even more powerful. And I got a window of opportunity when Sean started in preschool. So I had this little break in the morning to myself and I would make myself meditate. And yes, I say make myself because it was really hard. <laughs> And um, one day I had a mind-blowing supernatural experience. I heard a voice very clearly say, go to Kroger. Oh. <laughs> and I, it's so it's funny. It's amazing what those ad executives can do these days. You know? Like they're piping the ads in through the dreams or the meditation. I love that. And I'm like, <laughs> was that real? How embarrassing. Like, what does that mean? And so I thought, well, I'm alone. You know, I have time. <laughs> And so I drove myself to Kroger and I was mortified. I was filled with fear. And then I kept reassuring myself. I'd be like, Helen, it's okay. Nobody knows. You don't have to tell anybody. And Kroger's a pretty safe place. You know, except I didn't need any groceries. So oh. I felt really ridiculous walking around. Now, again, remember, we've spent a fortune on doctors and care for, for my pain. And I'm walking through Kroger and I see this rack of books and they're on sale for $5. And so I'm standing in front of the rack thinking, well, maybe this is it. And I see a book. It's called Mind Body Prescription Healing the Pain by Dr. John Sarno. And I bought it for $5. Now, if that isn't irony, I don't know what it is. So I take my $5 book home. I start reading. I read 30 pages every day for a whole month. Quite boring, but I was changing the way I think. And on my 40th birthday, my two boys and my husband and I, we all played hooky. We went to Astroworld and we have photos of me rock climbing. And I have not been in chronic pain since. Wow. And I bless Dr. Sarno. And if you fast forward to I'm um, an EFT practitioner, Gary Craig, in his book on back pain, he references Dr. Sarno's work. Interesting, interesting. So would you call that almost a spontaneous healing? I mean, well, no, because 30 okay, pages 30 every day was a little bit of work. 30-day spontaneity, you know? Um, the spontaneous part is that I actually got the information, and I was ready to integrate it and implement it. But really consider this. People in my life knew me as somebody with chronic pain, and they're like, hey, you look better. You must be feeling better. Yeah, I got healed by a book. <laughs> From Kroger yeah. for $5. <laughs> so, you know, I, my mind was totally blown open to don't limit how it comes to you. Take the blessings. You know, we pray and ask and beg and plead. And it's like, Bargain. you know, I think our creator has an outrageous sense of humor. And why wouldn't you just say yes? Take it however it comes. So even that experience being that odd 
has led me to joyously live the life that I live today, helping people the way I do. And you're such a great teacher, and I, I really want to just take a moment to say thank you for all that you are and all that you do for our community oh. and the world. But um, So, and one of the things that we share, and I really want to get into this, because if, we were, if it was just you and me sitting somewhere <laughs> talking, we'd be talking about this before the, before the session's over, you know? But let's talk a little bit about energy and what that really is and how we are beginning, I think, to understand that we can truly, or how we manifest our lives energetically. And I know that you uh, have classes on this, workshops on this, talks on this, you live this. And so let's, let's talk about that and share that because I think it, it it really becomes everything because when you went through that process, when you bought that book, mm -hmm. well, first of all, you listened to the message, even though it was Kroger. <laughs> and you didn't need to go to Kroger, but you went. I did go. You found something, you bought it, you felt grateful for finding it, and then you followed through with the action necessary for it to be a benefit. And the, that's the process that has to happen, right? I always love to say, and I, I do teach a lot, and I always say, the way you create success in anything is the way you create success in everything. So even a spiritual journey, um, developing intuition, creating healing in your own body through the use of your mind is the same process that you would build a business, that you would develop an athletic ability and a musical ability. Um, unfortunately, the, the dreaded P word for humans, it's all about practice. It's about commitment, it's about getting a skill, and then it's about building stamina in that skill till you reach a level of mastery. Right. So that's across the board, whether it's spirituality or something very grounded. Absolutely. And I, I think that we've lost sight of that a little bit, um, especially when it comes into the spiritual arena, because it seems like a lot of people get to the point where they think, okay, it's just going to come to me. Yeah, I can uh, and, just visualize an alm and I'll have it. Yeah. And, and it's like we're on maybe, earth. We're here for we're here for a very physical experience. And I think manifesting physically is the fun of the, of what we why we're here, right? Well, I can honestly say it's getting fun now because I'm really good and fast at it, but it wasn't so much fun in the beginning. Well, the but you have to get to the practice. It's kind of like so. practicing the piano when you first start and you have to do the, yeah. you know, I don't play the piano, but whatever that is you have to do with the metronome going back and forth. I mean, that's just boring stuff, but you have to build your foundation and then you can build on the foundation because if you don't make a solid foundation like anything else, like building a building, if you don't have that solid foundation, it's not going to it's not going to hold true. And that's one thing I've always loved about you, Peg, is um, you can talk woo-woo with the best of anybody, and yet you're very professional. Oh. I always, re you know, people are going to ask names or references, I'm like, if Peg says she'll do something, she will, which is really lovely oh. in any arena. Um, so I do want to go back to what you said about energy. So I have a way that I love to, to share this experience with right. people. It's entrainment. This is a vibrational planet. Okay, we it it just is, and you know we could talk about that a lot, but I'm going to give you a quick one that you can you can get. So, have you ever just been feeling really good, like the kind of good where you're singing or whistling while you're cleaning house? Good, like there's no reason for it. You are really vibrating very high. Your frequency is high. You're happy, no negative thoughts. And then the phone rings, and you answer the phone, and it's a friend, and they have just they're stressed and something terrible's happened and they're talking. So you've been vibrating up here, all happy, and they're down here feeling bad. Well, what happens on the phone call? And they say, oh, thank you, I feel so much better. <laughs> and you hang up and you're like, oh my God, I need a nap in Starbucks, right? right? That's entrainment. And so what I found through right action, right choice, living um, with a code of ethics, with uh, a skill set for living well, uh, Seven Habits. I always recommend that book. Embrace Those Seven Habits by Stephen Covey and you can live very powerfully. I tend to hold my frequency really high so that people feel good around me and yet I don't resonate down. Right. And when you're resonating high, then you actually attract into your experience all the things that would have you resonate higher. higher. Yes, I know. And the people that can play there and want to and so that's great and I, I I love that the visual that you just said you're up here they're down here and then you and they feel better <laughs> and you feel worse it's like wait what's wrong with that picture so I kind of 
you know, draw my boundaries these days. Of you want me to do that with you? You have to pay me. <laughs> I don't do that for free anymore. You know, you're not messing with my energy level unless you're paying me. <laughs> so, just kidding. But you know, you know what I'm saying. I think that I think it really comes down to, and I think a lot of people that are on a conscious path go through this. We get to the point where okay, we don't want to be judgmental, but we do have to be discerning about who we invest our energy with well and if you take you take the judgment out it's a vibrational planet so whatever's in your environment is vibrationally going to affect you so if you have a bunch of physical clutter around you you can't resonate as high as if you have more space and energy mm -hmm. so you want to hang out with people where you laugh a lot where you feel younger and, and funnier and smarter because then you get more and more of that and if you were like I was, you know, hanging out with people who were telling me the pain would be forever, and it was hard to be me, and, and the religious beliefs where I worried and was guilt-ridden, well, I attracted experiences that reflected that paradigm. And so, you know, it's, it's amazing. I always teach that, no, you, you don't create everything. You cannot one up God, and you cannot one up the divine plan. If we could, people like us would have already healed the planet 10 times over. <laughs> But you can learn different skill sets to have a way more pleasant, more fulfilling, more enjoyable experience in your life real time. Right. And I, I believe truly that I know that if enough of us do that, mm -hmm. we can shift the planet. And the example I use uh, in the book I wrote with Dr. Sam about the pyramids, in the beginning of the book, I said, you know, the world is flat, man can't fly. And those were absolute truths in the time, in the time. And so now they're not, nobody believes that anymore. Well, even look at the atom. Right, any, any concept like that. But what it took was the mass consciousness getting to a, what I call critical mass for the shift. So the more of us that understand, practice, keep at it, and as that group goes bigger, the mass consciousness meter is getting closer to critical mass. And when we reach that critical mass, it'll go, and everybody will understand that the world is not flat, or whatever the new concept is, right? I think it's coming, it's such an exciting time to be alive. It is, and we can all participate in that. Yes. I, I think that is, uh, we lose sight sometimes of the real power that we have, and I, I say over and over again, in my workshops, my classes, anywhere I can, the only way we're really going to make this shift is for each of us individually to do it. Well, being a woman, I'm grateful for the women I won't even know. They've made such a profound difference through changing beliefs. I mean, at my age, I can go back to school, I could do, I could own a business, sell a business, I could change my mind. I have so much freedom today that wasn't even possible 50 years ago. Right. wasn't possible 100 years ago. Right. Definitely didn't work for my mom. Mm -hmm. And that's due to women before me who stood up and spoke out and faced their own fears and made great change. So right. yes, it ripples forward yes. to people we won't even know. Right. Yes, women and people. And the other thing that's changed, and I say this a lot is, because you know, we do, we're kind of in the woo-woo category, even though we're really <laughs> enjoying it, but, but uh, you know, 100 years ago, they would have been burning us at the stake. Yeah. And I don't know anyone, personally, in my lifetime, that's been burned at the stake. So things have gotten a lot better. We've moved much closer to that critical mass just because there's more tolerance. Yeah, and again, the video games, the kids. Yes, absolutely. They talk about energy, and one day, I heard my son just recently say, oh yeah, no, my mom's a, dro I think he said a druid or a droid or something. I don't even know what he said. And I was like, is that good? <laughs> and he says, you know, that's a healer. Yeah, it's good. And I'm like, and their, their friend just got it. And I'm like, huh, maybe I should check that game out. <laughs> We, all right, this has been fun. <laughs> this has been really fun. I want to keep going, but I'm told we have to stay. we have to cut it off. <laughs> Helen, thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, thank you for joining us. I'm Peggy Sue Skipper. This is the Consciously Curious Show, and we're going to keep talking, but you have to go away. <laughs>